Welcome to the Workology Podcast, where we discuss the science and art of the workplace, gain powerful insights, resources, and perspectives on the industries of human resources and recruiting. Join your host, Jessica Miller-Merrill, Chief Blogger of bloggingforjobs.com, for an in-depth and no-holds-barred look into the future of our most powerful business asset, the employee. And now, welcome your host, Jessica, with this podcast episode of Workology. In the United States, the STEM-skilled workforce is in high demand. There aren't enough candidates skilled and educated in science, technology, engineering, and math to fill out the positions that we have available for all the companies. Today's topic that we're going to be talking about is how to tap into the mind of a technical recruiter. Maybe you're doing some technical recruiting or you're looking to hire some engineers. The reason that STEM jobs are going unfilled in such large numbers is because in this fast-paced, high-tech world that we live in, STEM-oriented occupations are continuing to grow by leaps and bounds. And one of the greatest assets to any company or organization burdened by the rising demand for tech workers is the tech recruiter. So today I'm going to be talking with a technical recruiter who's going to, to help us tap into the mind of a tech recruiter, and his name is Lauren Guerrera. Welcome to the podcast, Lauren. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. So Lauren is a senior recruiter with Blizzard Entertainment based in Austin, Texas. On any given day, he's on the hunt for anything from a senior web front-end engineer to a user experience researcher and analyst. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, maybe fill in the blanks for us. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so I've been doing this for a number of years. I probably, actually, I've been doing this since around uh, 1997. And I've seen the, te the technology grow from something pretty basic back then to brand new technologies and, and new things that we're having to hunt for on a daily basis today. Um, you know, and um, it, it's basically, you know, I started back when Monster was nothing, you know, and it was just pretty much getting started. You know, it was a brand new word out there. And, uh, and I've been, you know, forging ahead ever since trying to find the right talent and, and bring in that right talent for the organizations I've been with. So let's talk about a little bit about um, technical recruiting. You mentioned Monster, and uh, I'm guessing that we're talking about job boards and Monster.com. And, and so right. uh, just for those folks who are like, what's Monster? Is that a drink? No, it's a job board. Um, <laughs> so you, I mean, really, you've been around. Um, I mean, you've seen the good, the bad. Um, you've, you've been part of the tech bubble um, and, and the current market that we're in. We, we've had previous podcasts with, uh, with some others where we talked about how it really is a job seekers market. And it definitely is in these highly technical positions. But I wanted to ask you, what has been the biggest surprise over the last 20 years for you? Is there anything that stands out in your mind um, in the technical recruiting field? I think the, the biggest surprise in general it really is just the vast amounts of data and the analyzation and collection of that data that's available um, to, to, to modern day recruiters. Um, there's so, we have so many options right now to go out there and actually source, find, and, and gather candidates for various different roles that are out there. And I think the biggest issue that I've seen that I come up with on a daily basis really is sorting through and qualifying the, roles, uh, the right candidates for the roles that I have. Um, and actually, you know, finding those QIA candidates, those who are qualified, interested, and available for the roles that I'm looking to fill. Do you think that this kind of rise of information available, I mean, how much has social media and social networks accounted for this, and particularly the internet? Uh, I think quite a bit, a lot. You know, um, back when I started, uh, I was mainly hired and got into the industry because um, I had a background in the internet and I understood the internet and I was brought on board to a recruiting organization to teach them how to use the internet um, and how to access your resumes online. Um, it wasn't something I was looking for, but it was something that really piqued my interest and um, the curiosity has grown since then. And it's one of these things where um, I no longer, you know, utilize boards whatsoever. I think a lot of uh, recruiting today and technical recruiting is around relationship building and having to use those social networks to really uh, build those relationships and uh, nurture those relationships and and, um, and and utilize those for yourself and uh, you know for the advancement of the um, you know, the candidates that you have. Everywhere we turn, we hear STEM, STEM, STEM. Explain to us why these jobs are so important in America, and do you feel? like there's one that's more important than others or 
maybe one that's easy you have an easier time filling than than others you know stem is important for so many reasons um it, it said today that every 10 years our technology advances at the rate that typically took 100 years um and that is shrinking so you know what used to take 100 years to advance we do that in 10 years now and that's shrinking every day it's going on to five years two years what have you i think we can all see that, you know, just with our own cell phones that we have. You know, we get a cell phone and then there's a brand new cell phone that's out within the next, you know, three, four, five, six months that has new technology on it. And it's advancement for what we bought before that we thought was the top of the line in technology. Um, so that being said, you know, technology in general is just exploding. Um, and the needs that we have out there technically, you know, really are needs that we have um, have to find the right candidates for it to learn those technologies and grow that. Um, you know, STEM helps our kids focus on the subjects needed to help them grow into those technical roles that I'm mentioning. I mean, I, I think STEM is extremely important, but, you know, I still think that we still need people outside of STEM. I don't think you can have a whole society of people who are strictly focused on STEM. You know, I think those liberal arts are still necessary to kind of keep the world going. Um, but really, the, the, the need for those new technology factors are are great and bound. Um, one thing that I have noticed, though, and um, I, I've had a number of different hiring managers tell me this over the past few years, especially, um, especially since the, uh, uh, the need for the right candidates just isn't being met, that a lot of new grads coming out of school right now, it seems, um, it, it seems in my eyes, almost like they're, they're almost rushing them to get them into the workforce and rushing them to get that background that we're looking for. And the hiring managers that I support and I've talked to actually said that a number of these folks coming out, a lot of these kids, just don't have the depth coming out of college that they used to see. Uh, they don't have the depth of knowledge or depth of understanding that we, we used to see back in the day, you know, 10, 15 years ago when folks are coming out of school. Um, a case in point is, is, um, is kids they have never heard of or never seen or understand what fizz buzz is. And FizzBuzz is basically a, um, it's a problem solving puzzle that a lot of engineers use and that they learned back in school that today they still use sometimes for interview purposes to really kind of understand how those engineers think and to see how they process the numbers and algorithms, et cetera. Um, and, and it's one thing that a lot of, uh, you know, managers today, you know, even though the kids are coming out with the, the degrees and the knowledge, it's just not the depth that they're looking for. So that's just one big concern I have. Hmm. I've never heard of FizzBuzz. I think that is interesting. We'll try to put a link to it for, for folks that are interested in, in learning more about that. Uh, going back to my earlier question, is there a position right now that is really tough for you to be able to find candidates for? Uh, is there one that's maybe tougher than others? Not necessarily. I mean, I think candidates are out there. You know, I think with the ability to actually uh, utilize the Internet and search it and source it, and use your networks, you can actually find the candidates that you're looking for. The question is whether or not those candidates are qualified, interested, and available. Um, and really, I think a lot of what we're doing today from the recruitment side isn't necessarily always just finding the right candidate, but really trying to get those candidates interested in the roles that you have. I know there's a big push, you know, let's say, for, um, for a lot of companies out there, including us at Blizzard, you know, that we're looking for server-side back-end Java engineers. And uh, these are the same engineers at Blizzard that we're looking for that um, – People at Amazon, uh, Google, uh, PayPal, and, and LinkedIn are looking for at the same time. Um, it's the same type of technology stack. Um, so we're going up against those same companies looking for these same engineers. That being said, um, the engineers we want and we know, they're out there. It's just a lot of turning around and working with them and building their relationships to get them interested in the roles that we have. You're talking about folks being interested and available. So how do we find out if, if these stem workers are available i am seeing more and more of engineers and data scientists going away from linkedin which is rec most recruiters first choice to go for candidate searches not, not necessarily in for technical positions but how do we find out if these folks are available is it simply just an email or a phone call it is it is a lot of it is just personal interaction and um I think a lot of new recruiters on the market today really kind of rely heavily on simple email and sending emails out to get, you know, um, people's attention. And I think what they'll find out is that um, a lot of times you got to pick up the phone and just make that call. And you get a lot of better 
um, success and attention by actually making that call and speaking with the candidate for a couple minutes, then, you know, pegging them with emails every couple of days until you hear back from them and then trying to create something um, over a few day period when you could easily take care of it pretty much right away. And um, once you are able to make that connection, you know, I, I think it's um, very important to really, you know, uh, create those relationships and, 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 and speak to these folks, you know, on a true level and not, not, um, you know, not come across salesy about what you're doing, but really trying to create a relationship and understanding for what they're doing and how, um, you know, you can possibly utilize their network or, or see if they're interested in the role that you have. Do you think that recruiting is different in terms of recruiting maybe non-technical employees or candidates versus technical recruiting? And if so, what's, what are the differences? I think some roles are, are a lot of the same. Uh, or some disciplines, put it that way. I think design has a lot of the same type of um, interaction and, and same type of um, uh, roadblocks that we look at on the engineering side. Uh, some of the things that I recruit for as well are, you know, user experience designers and, and designers in that side, which are very sought after right now. It's a brand new type of role that has pretty much just hit the uh, uh, the marketplace only a few years back and is getting really hot. And, and it's one of these things that um, is... Um, heavily recruited for nationwide. And we're running into that same issue where we're trying to find the right candidates that have the exact skills that we're looking for to fill the roles. Um, they're out there. It's just connecting with them and seeing if they're interested or not. So it, there's other roles out there that I think don't require as much. I think there's roles out there more um, on the not so heavily skilled side that are probably, you know, uh, easier to recruit for that are just, you know, simple communication, getting back and forth without having to necessarily create a strong relationship. But I think more of the professional level roles that you're, you're looking to fill, um, professional and above, those are the ones that require more attention on that from a, a relationship standpoint. Well, let's take a little bit of a reset. This is Jessica Miller Merrill, and you're listening to the Workology podcast powered by Blogging for Jobs. Today's topic is tapping into the mind of a technical recruiter, and I'm here with Lauren Guerrera. You can connect with Lauren on Twitter at L O R E N Guerrera, G U E R R A. All right, well, let's let's get back to the questions because one of the things that I wanted to ask you, and, and you mentioned that early on in your career, you were working with a staffing company where you were talking to them about the internet and training recruiters on, on how to use the internet. I wanted to ask you about what's the difference in your mind between maybe an internal recruiter or an internal technical recruiter versus going outside and, and maybe working with an agency or a staffing firm to fill your, your technical recruiting needs. Yeah, definitely. I think um, personally, I, I've been on both sides. I've been both corporate and I've been agency. And um, I'm going to be honest and think and, and say that I think the the best and most well-rounded recruiters out there and successful ones are the ones who have, have touched both, um, especially those that are in a corporate setting now and have a background with agency recruiting. Um, that being said, you know, both of them have their strengths and weaknesses. And uh, I think a big thing is, is that um, an external recruiter really a lot of times loses the cultural uh, significance of the company that they're recruiting for. Um, I think it's important to have that agency, you know, in the toolbox uh, and use them as a tool, you know, for, for uh, roles that need to be filled. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that uh, if I'm a corporate recruiter and um, let's say that I recruit oranges and I recruit oranges and I have a process down and I have a network for recruiting these oranges and keeping this pipeline of oranges going for what I have a need for, then all of a sudden I get a hiring manager request for an apple. And recruiting for that apple will throw everything out of whack. Um, it'll throw my process out and require much more time needed that, um, uh, to fill that apple that I could, that I could be using to you know, recruit more oranges. Um, that being said, I'll turn to an agency and say, hey, agency, XYZ, you know, um, I have an apple that needs filling. Can you help me here? You know, so I think agencies are very, very important. Um, but I think that, um, you know, an internal recruiter is extremely important with a, a company because they definitely have a vested interest because it's the company that they actually work for. They understand the culture. They're able to push the culture. Uh, they're really able to sell the organization and, um, you know, explain the organization 100% to the candidate um, without um, 
coming across as if they don't know what they're talking about or that they could easily get one culture mixed up with another culture at another company, you know, if they're from an external firm. Um, but, but I think in all, you know, both of them have their strengths. You know, uh, external recruiters um, are really great. You know, they, they also focus heavily more so on the external side of, you know, filling orders. Whereas an internal recruiter definitely has a background and more of a strategic output and working with headcount and working as a business partner with the hiring manager, with the business units itself to actually help them um, fill those roles that they have because basically they are part of that unit itself. So I think uh, internal roles really uh, tend to be much more of a strategic need. Um, and it's really something that a company needs to take advantage of when they're really at that point where they need to grow that company and understand the need to have that cultural um, understanding behind that to bring in the right folks. I've often said that the technical recruiter role within an organization, in my mind, is the, in many cases, the second or the third most important person in the company. You have like the CEO or the founder, and mm -hmm. then you have the engineer, and then you have the recruiter. Right. Because they need to go out and find those unicorns, those purple squirrels, all those, you know, names and, and things that we mentioned, but those people that know and understand what needs to be done and, and can do that in that really technical coding language. I agree. And I, I think, you know, um, I actually see myself, I see myself pretty much as a, uh, almost like a, a blizzard evangelist, you know, um, I get out there and I talk to folks about blizzard, who we are and what we do, you know, and I talk to them about the games that we have, the culture that we have and really kind of, you know, sell blizzard as it is. And, and I can't do that unless I believe in it, which I do. Um, and uh, at, at the end of the day, it's one of these things where any good recruiter that understands their internal role within the company itself can stand up on a podium and turn around and tell a room about the company they work for and really kind of sell it and, and push it. You know, So I, I think what's interesting is that um, a lot of times recruiters, I find out, will know much more about the business itself of that company, will know much more about the, um, uh, the actual you know, profit and revenue of that company. Uh, know much more about the technology of that company and will really be on the same level as a number of different executives in regards to the actual knowledge around the entire company from a, a full spectrum than the standard employee in the company itself. I can definitely see that because they're being asked all kinds of questions and information from their candidates and so they have to be prepared. I agree. Well, and I will say that when I called into Blizzard, um, to talk with you the first time when we connected over the phone. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the culture is apparent, even if when you dial in. So the, the answering service really speaks to what type of environment employees are going to be working in. And um, then your job as the recruiter, obviously, like you said, is information sharing. Uh, you're qualifying the candidates, but you're, in a, you're definitely an evangelist for the organization. In every way. I, I believe that 100%. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about recruiters and how they can utilize or, or maybe how Blizzard or and yourself in, in your many years of experience has utilized the existing workforce to find and, and maybe even vet technical candidates. Is there a secret sauce or is there a best practice that you can share? I, I wouldn't say there's a secret sauce. You know, I'm going to go back again to kind of what I've you know, mentioned a few times, and that's just about relationships. Um, if you reach out to any tech candidate today, they're going to tell you that they get propositioned numerous times per day by recruiters um, looking for people like themselves um, to, to hire into the organization. And the majority of those requests are, are vastly just ignored 100% by these candidates. Um, so it's one of these things that when you are able to connect and establish a relationship with a candidate, um, it's really good to foster that relationship so they can help you, um, you know, uh, source referrals and create new relationships with the new candidates and, and, and new people within the industry. Um, I think if you are able to find the right people, which it is a numbers game, honestly, uh, I think that when you are able to find the right people who are open to talking to you, um, you need to, I don't want to say take advantage of it, but you need to respect the fact that they are speaking to you because you're one of 50 people who have probably hit them up that same day. And that being said, you know, I think it's extremely important that if you're going to recruit for a specific role or technology or skill set, that it's, it's you kind of need to know what you're talking about a bit. Um, the last thing you want to do is, is come across as a, as a recruiter for technology who doesn't really understand technology or is just kind of, you know, reading off a script um, and just saying words verbatim without really understanding, you know, how they fall in. 
um, I think you'll get much, much, much more respect from those candidates you're speaking to and, and have those relationships with who you can actually have uh, something of a technical conversation with to really kind of um, let them understand that you know what you're talking about and you're not just some guy off the street just kind of hitting them up to see if you can get a fill. I definitely see that a lot where a lot of the, to the tech companies, they'll bring in a number of contract recruiters and you can see when, when I'm looking through LinkedIn, like I did some uh, recruiting for recruiters last year for a number of different roles. Mm -hmm. And when they only have 60 days of employment at a certain startup or a certain technology company in the Valley, it says to me that they were just reading a script. They weren't taking time to maybe build those relationships or, or get to know the candidate. A lot of people don't realize even when you're a recruiter, how many calls these engineers and, and folks are getting. It's, it's really crazy. And, and many of them don't answer. It is. I mean, and I don't have a technical background. Um, I mean, I have a background in film. So, <laughs> um, but I do have a fascination with, and I have a respect for technology and how it works. Um, and that being said, you know, if there is a term or, te or, or terminology or, or technology that comes on my plate that I have to understand, I'll turn around, I'll look it up and I'll study it and understand it, whatever the acronym is, how it works. And then I'll ask my engineers, you know, that I'm supporting how does this work? What am I looking for? What are some keywords? You know, what if, you know, somebody comes with this type of scenario, how does this fall into place, et cetera? Um, and over time, you know, I've been able to build up an understanding of the different technology stacks that I support, um, how they play in the marketplace, and really, you know, target and focus on specific candidates, you know, with specific types of backgrounds that, uh, that I'm searching for. I, I like that about you. I, I like that, you know, if people are listening to this podcast and, and they're hearing you talk, I mean, calm, cool, collected, obviously extremely intelligent, somebody that you could have beers with, but also talk business. And, and I think that that is, in my mind, as we're talking about relationships, really important for good recruiting. One, one thing that I wanted to mention is you're talking about how you're talking to your engineers and asking questions. Companies are going so far as putting their recruiting teams in the same sort of office area or yes. even um, reporting directly to engineering because they there is not that interface happening between recruiter and engineer. Yes, yes. Um, I'm actually, I've, uh, you know, case in point, I've actually, uh, I'm fortunate enough here in the Austin office for Blizzard that I do sit within our Battle.net team, uh, which is one of our main engineering teams within the company. Um, so I'm able to sit there with the engineers and I hear them and I talk to them and I socialize with them. Um, and I'm not sitting within, you know, a, a recruiting bullpen per se. Um, so I'm able to sit there and, you know, pick the brain of the engineers that I work with and talk to, get a better understanding of it and um, really kind of, you know, become part of the geek culture that, um, you know, is prevalent within the engineering groups itself. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and talking and, and getting us into the mind of, of what a technical recruiter does, thinks, and, and just how they operate. I, I think that you've given us a lot of great information and um, hopefully some takeaways for, for some of the listeners to say, like, maybe we are doing some technical recruiting and we need to reassess things or really understand how, how the job gets done. So thank you for, for taking the time today. I wanted to ask, is there a preferred way for people to be able to connect with you if they wanted to ask more questions or learn more about what it is that you do? Sure. You know, first off, you know, thank you very much for having me on here. I enjoy, um, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy talking about it and I'll talk to everybody about it. It's just, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a people person and, um, you know, it, it's, it's fun. Um, but yeah, the best way for folks to get a hold of me is I am on LinkedIn. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I see my request daily coming through. Um, but if somebody wants to hit me up personally, you know, my Gmail address is uh, first name, last name, Lauren Guerra at gmail.com. And L-O-R-E-N-G-U-E-R-R-A at Gmail. Um, other than that, you know, LinkedIn. And then uh, I'm easily searchable on the web as well. So, Awesome. Well, thank you, Lauren, uh, again. And thank you for everyone for tuning in. This is Jessica Miller-Merrill where... Uh, on the Workology podcast where we discuss the science and art of the workplace, HR and recruitment. Until next time, you can visit Blogging for Jobs to be able to listen to all our past episodes. Thank you again. Production services for the Workology podcast with Jessica Miller-Merrill provided by Total Picture Media.